Good afternoon and welcome to our first Return to Campus conversation. I'm Sharon Martin, Vice President for University Relations and Enrollment Management. As the university prepares to return to campus this fall, we will be having a series of these conversations to provide more information on specific topics. Today's conversation will provide you with a broad overview of decisions made to date, as well as information we are still working on. There is a lot of information to digest. So I urge you to take advantage of all the ways we're going to be communicating with you in the future. And later in this presentation, there will be an email address that you can send information to or questions to if you have specific items you want to address. But to begin, let me introduce who we have with us today. Joining us are Rob Alsop, Vice President for Strategic Initiatives, Dr. Jeff Coben, Associate Vice President for Health Affairs and Dean of the School of Public Health, Krista Board, Vice President for Talent and Culture, Corey Ferris, Dean of Students, and Marianne Reed, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. What we will be reviewing today includes slides on campus safety and personal safety, as well as academic, student life, and communication. We will also answer a few questions we've been receiving at the end of this session. So to begin, let's walk back a couple of months. The university has been partnering with the state as we have navigated the COVID-19 pandemic. We made early decisions to shelter at home and reduce spread by wearing masks and taking all the proper safety precautions. Because of that, the state has been able to keep the number of positive cases low. We want to continue that trend as we approach fall. President Gee appointed several working groups in early April to begin planning for a return to campus. These groups have represented a cross-section of the university and have addressed issues that we will face upon return. Today's information provides an overview of those decisions with more detailed information to come in the weeks ahead. I want to remind everyone there is still much work to be done. We will not have all the answers, but we do have a very good framework in place as we continue planning for August. So now I will turn it over to Rob Alsop to talk about campus safety. Thank you, Sharon, and hello to everyone. We are excited as a team as we work through the summer and get ready to bring everybody back to campus and, and working towards a vibrant fall as we all work together. We have been focusing a lot on campus safety, and so there's several points that I want to walk through. As we know we're going to be living with COVID-19, how we try to do that in a safe and responsible way. So the first point that I wanted to talk about is when employees will return to campus. We are going to continue to densify our campus to reduce spread, save on expenses, and critical supplies. Now, I know that there are some folks, our researchers and others who maintain our campus who have been working on campus from time to time, and that will continue. We're going to continue to keep our employees working from home until those employees need to return to the campus for the success of in-person instruction and the student life experience. Those employees who will need to return to campus will be informed by their supervisor in July as to when they will return moving forward. Now to reduce the risk of spread, many units will continue to work from home. In addition to reducing the spread of any potential positives, this will also allow the university to maintain and reduce our costs and to manage necessary cleaning and safety supplies as we move forward with an on-campus experience this fall. The second piece of what we're going to do is really critical as we keep not only our university safe, but our community safe moving forward relates to the testing of our faculty, staff, and students. The university is committed to testing all of our students, faculty, and staff as they are returning to, to campus at no cost to those individuals. We're working with a team of partners within the university, but also with the WVU medicine team and the West Virginia National Guard and our local health department to ensure a safe and healthy return to campus. And that initial testing that we're requiring is an essential part of that. Additionally, the university is prepared to conduct additional surveillance testing throughout the fall semester. And when individuals do become symptomatic, the ability to quickly test and identify those individuals to try to reduce the spread this fall. We'll share a lot more of those details in the coming weeks as we move forward on our robust testing process. The third area that we think is really critical for the university relates to face masks or cloth, cloth face coverings. 
as we come back to campus, there's going to be a lot of folks in spaces for our classrooms and as we walk through the mountain layer and we get to come back on campus and bring it back to life. To make sure that we do that safely, however, we are going to require that face masks or cloth face coverings are, must be worn by all of our students, faculty, and staff on campus when they're in the presence of others and in public settings where social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. The math, mask or cloth face covering does not eliminate the need to practice good social distancing habits. And we'll provide more details about the appropriateness for cloth face coverings, including how they should fit over the nose and mouth and fit snugly. We'll have information on um, when they can be worn. So you can wear them once and they either need to be thrown away or cleaned um, every day, um, not to use them if they become wet or contaminated and how they can be secured to their fa your face in a safe manner. Masks are critical to a successful fall. We also know that we're going to have to work hard on social distancing and personal hygiene. Keeping space between individuals is one of the best tools we have to avoid COVID-19 exposure and slow its spread. So we're asking our students, faculty, and staff on campus to follow the following social distancing practices. Whenever it's feasible, stay at least six feet apart. That's about two arm's lengths from each other. And again, wear that face coverings. We want you to avoid staying out of crowded places and avoid mass gatherings. Eliminate contact with others, such as handshakes or embracing. We want you to avoid, whenever possible, touching surfaces touched by others. And avoid anyone who is coughing, sneezing, or appears to be sick. Now, oftentimes we think, well, I'm not feeling all that bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into work or I'm gonna go ahead and go to class. That's not what we want this fall. If you're not feeling well for your safety and the safety of others, it's okay to stay home. It's okay to make sure that you're protecting others and doing that. So not only avoid those who are sick, but don't put risk others. A Couple of other things. There's nothing like good old fashioned hand washing. Individual washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after you've been in a public place or after you've blown your nose or cough or sneeze or touch your face. If soap and water are not readily available, you use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. If you are in a private setting and you don't have a mask or a face covering, remember to cover your mouth or nose when coughing or sneezing and make sure you properly dispose of any tissues in the trash and immediately wash your hands afterwards or use hand sanitizers. I do want to note that we are working on acquiring a significant amount of hand sanitizers that will be distributed to all of our buildings on campus. We'll have dispensers that will be freestanding as well as uh, mounted and table stop, top styles. And we are continuing to work on individual supplies of hand sanitizers as well. We're also going to provide all of our faculty, staff, and students a personal safety kit as you return to campus. So each kit will include a personal hand sanitizer, alcohol wipes, a copper plated safe touch tool key with a badge reel attachment, and three medical disposable face masks. In addition, we have already ordered and are starting to receive um, branded WVU washable cloth face mask and gaiters, and everybody will get one of those. Distribution details will follow in the coming weeks. Also, I wanna to just touch quickly on cleaning. You should know that we're committed to using CDC approved cleaning supplies for our campus. We're maintaining a sufficient stock of cleaning supplies, sanitiz sanitizers, and disinfectants. We're going to frequently clean our high touch surface areas, such as doorknobs and handles, push plates and crash bars, automatic door openers, um, stair doors and handrails, elevator and call buttons, touch keypads, vending machines, tables and chairs and break rooms, and restroom surfaces and fixtures. Additionally, we will have supplies available on our campus for self-cleaning by our faculty, staff, and students. These include supplies that can be used in areas uh, like classrooms, computer labs, common areas, libraries, buses and state vehicles, and certain areas of the rec center. More information on cleaning will be shared in the future. As it relates to dining, you should know that we will encourage distancing through our, our campus and there will be limited seating and operating procedures on campus. Equip, we will equip employees with appropriate PPE and monitoring human temperatures for dining. 
We will also be planning our dining rooms and self-service experiences to be safe for our employees and for our students. Um, we will have carry out and grab and go options will be available and we are going to eliminate self-serve and buffet options to reduce contamination. We're also working on transportation and protocols are under review for the operation of the PRT and we will have increased busing and implementing significant restrictions for social, dis for social distancing and face coverings on all transportation. Finally, as it relates to building occupancy and ingress and egress, we are developing plans on how we will manage occupancies in things like the crossings, the mountain layer, the libraries, and the rec center, as well as plans for controlled reopenings of these areas. We will attempt to have dedicated separate entry, entries and exit points for these larger and heavily used buildings to try to limit crossover in these areas as well as common spaces and adjust personnel workflow to the extent possible. And finally, we will encourage individuals to walk to the right in common hallways, corridors, and paths. So as you can see, we have a lot of operational details that we've been working through, whether it be testing and masks, cleaning supplies, and how we thoughtfully bring everybody back to campus and more details to come in the coming weeks, Sharon. Thank you, Rob. And now Dr. Coben and Chris DeBoard will talk about personal safety. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will follow up uh, uh, with a few brief remarks uh, um, based on Rob's initial comments. Um, I'm going to focus my remarks really on three public health interventions that we feel are essential for protecting the health and safety of our campus community. And those interventions are testing, contact tracing, and mask utilization. Um, as Rob mentioned, our intent is to perform coronavirus testing for all employees and students uh, prior to the start of the fall semester. Uh, this will be done at several sites across campus and will be done in collaboration with the West Virginia National Guard, the Mon County Health Department, other local health departments and our regional campuses, and WVU Medicine. Um, we will be testing for evidence of the virus itself, not the antibody testing, but the actual testing for the virus itself, using nasal swabs, and we'll be using the latest technology that makes that testing quick and painless for all that undergo it. Um, we'll be testing our returning athletes first uh, in June, and then we'll be rolling on to test uh, employees towards the end of July and our student population as they come back to campus uh, in August. Uh, in addition to this initial testing, as Rob mentioned, we'll also be uh, continuing to test uh, throughout the semester, both symptomatic and asymptomatic employees and students uh, as we move forward. The second area I'd like to focus on is contact tracing. As we test more and more people, we also need to be prepared for how to respond to positive cases. And we've been working on this quite a bit over the last uh, two months, and we've had actually some experience with that already. Uh, a critical component of this We'll be working with the Mon County Health Department, local health departments, on a robust contact tracing program once an individual is identified. We've already made substantial progress. As some of you may know, we have trained over 100 new individuals on how to perform contact tracing. And we've also established a HIPAA compliant data system that will help us to manage contact tracing uh, throughout our campus and in the larger community in collaboration with the local health department. And finally, um, I cannot overemphasize the importance of wearing masks um, and face coverings across our campus. We know that this one intervention along with uh, social distancing is really one of the most important tools in our toolkit to help uh, reduce the spread of COVID-19. So we'll be requiring the use of masks and face coverings, and we'll be asking for everyone's full cooperation with this effort as we move forward. Thank you, and I'll now turn it over to Chris. 
Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, well, I'm going to start just by talking about the phased return to campus and uh, you know working from home. And it starts with a, a real basic philosophy, and, and that thought process is if you don't need to be on campus, then you really shouldn't be on campus. And uh, the reason behind that is the more variables, and, and in this case it's people, that we remove from the situation, uh, the easier it's going to be for us to manage our response and try to slow the spread of the virus uh, this fall on campus. And so with that being said, we know there are many jobs that are going to require physical presence on campus in order to meet the needs of our students and provide a good experience for our students this fall. In those situations, we're planning to give leaders discretion to determine who needs to return to campus based on the individual needs of the, that particular department or unit. And we're going to be working with leaders in the coming weeks to identify faculty and staff who will be required to work on site and those who can continue to work uh, remotely. And we will have a follow-up return to campus conversation in mid-July that really focuses on return to campus and uh, gets in a lot more details around all of those discussions and what to expect as we get closer to August. Um, in terms of travel, you know, another one just to think about uh, with that same premise, all non-essential university travel will be extremely limited during the fall semester. We are going to require that any employee who has to travel must submit that request through their vice president or dean. Um, one, to make sure that we limit uh, to only truly essential university travel, but two, so we know, um, you know, where we have people traveling, where we may have people, um, you know, exposed to different uh, hotspots as we get through the fall, just to help us again with contact tracing and slowing the spread of the virus. Um, and then we also are going to plan on requiring, if you do travel outside of the state, uh, subjecting yourselves to a five-day self-quarantine, self-monitoring period. And again, there'll be more guidelines on that as we get closer to fall and the return to campus. Uh, for visitors, similar thinking. Uh, we're going to ask that all non-essential visits to campus be strongly discouraged. And every visitor should have a host. Uh, that host will be responsible for sending a self-screening checklist prior to the visit. And similar to what Jeff had talked about, um, you know, if that person is sick or not feeling well or thinks they might have been exposed to someone who is symptomatic, uh, we're really not going to want to bring them onto campus. Um, we're also going to ask that, you know, in the interviewing uh, aspect of things that all applicant screening should occur by telephone or video. Uh, we've all gotten much more proficient at the use of tools like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, so we're going to ask to continue that in the employment process. And then we plan to limit in-person interviews to uh, final candidate pools and limit uh, the rooms that we use for interviews on campus. We've got designated interview rooms, and there'll be more details as well to follow in that July campus conversation. The last piece that I'll talk about is education. Um, we recognize as well that when we do come back to campus, our students, our faculty, and our staff will be returning from a variety of places, and each of those places have their own set of rules and guidelines that might not necessarily align with, uh, you know, the guidelines we want to have in place for a safe return to campus at WVU. So we think education is going to be critical to make sure we all start off on the same page and understand what the expectations are and what the standards are. And so in late July and early August timeframe, we will have an online uh, training module that we're going to ask all faculty, staff, and students to complete again with the, the thought process there that gets us all on the same page around what the standards will be on campus uh, for our return this fall. To In addition to that, uh, our leadership and development team is putting together a series of training sessions to support supervisors in managing their teams uh, as we return to on-campus work. So those are the, the main things that we're, we have in the planning process. And I'll look forward to uh, speaking with all of you in further detail on all of those topics at our uh, July campus conversation. Thank you, Jeff and Chris. And now Provost Marianne Reed will give us more information about academic affairs. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, I'd like to begin by saying that on the academic side, we are very much looking forward to a safe 
reopening of our WVU campuses this fall. And with that in mind, we've made some adjustments to the academic experience. First of all, we have adjusted the academic calendar so that we can keep students on campus and to discourage back and forth travel during the, the semester. So in fall, uh, for the fall semester, we start our, our uh, academic calendar on the regular date of August 19th. There will be no fall break and on-campus instruction will end on Tuesday, November 24th. Students will not return to campus after Thanksgiving break. Um, the week after Thanksgiving break will be devoted to online instruction and finals will be held online the week of December 7th through 11th. Pivoting ahead to the spring calendar, uh, we plan to start a week later, um, beginning on um, Tuesday, the 19th of January, and this was done based on advice from our medical professionals because they believe that the potential for the spread of the virus is greater in the spring, which is also the height of the flu season. There will be no spring break, but we will be providing several days off, which include two study days, which will be scheduled uh, during, during the, the middle of the week and uh, Good Friday, and then the spring semester will end on time. Second, we are working to keep our classrooms safe. So uh, we will be requiring, uh, as Rob said earlier, uh, we were requiring masks of, uh, to be worn by students and faculty in the classroom. Uh, we're also going to be providing portable plexiglass shields that will sit in front of the lecterns um, to keep the uh, faculty members safe. Um, and we will be employing social distancing protocols. So, to do so, based on the advice from our medical professionals, our goal is to reduce density in the classroom by 50%. So in order to have enough classrooms to do that, we will need to offer instruction in multiple modalities. That includes putting some classes online, offering some classes in what is called the hybrid flex model, which for an individual course could mean that on-campus instruction is offered on alternate days, supplemented with online instruction. In the remaining classrooms, students will be spread out to achieve the 50% reduction in density. Still, we don't have enough classrooms to, uh, to accomplish that, so, so we actually will be scheduling some courses in alternative spaces both on campus and off. For example, some large lecture classes may be scheduled in the Met Theater downtown. Third, we know that students are anxious, um, as the faculty are as well, to, to know what the fall, fall course schedule will look like. Um, but it is a complicated process. We have many moving parts. So our goal is to have that information finalized by June 30th if not sooner. At that time, students will have the ability to review their schedule um, and they can talk to their advisor if they want to make adjustments. Uh, we are also expecting our faculty to be flexi fle flexible in the way they deliver instruction. Um, if for any reason uh, we need to pivot again, if there is an outbreak, for example, of the virus and there are disruptions in the calendar, they have to be ready to go online. We will be providing trainings throughout the summer to faculty um, on how to teach in these multiple modes of instruction, and there'll be more information about that in the coming days coming from my office. Fourth, to reduce density on campus, we also plan to offer our student support services virtually, and that includes advising, tutoring, and success coaching. And we're also strongly encouraging our faculty to conduct their office hours online. And this is to protect both the students and the faculty members. And then finally, in recognition that we are a one, R1 university, um, we have already begun to open up our research labs, again with required PPE and that reduction in density. Our first priority uh, this fall, this summer and this fall, um, is to support research that is externally funded and that supports graduate student work, which is necessary for their academic advancement. And finally, I just wanna say that this is not going to 
look or feel like a typical semester, um, but we truly think it'll be a positive academic experience if everybody has the right, right mindset, which is to be flexible and adaptive and opening, open to learning in new ways. Thanks, Mary Ann. And now to our Dean of Students, Corey Ferris, who will talk about student life. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I, I've got several areas that I'll address today, but I, I do want to kick it off by saying to the students that are watching, we missed you um, at the end of spring semester, and we certainly miss you over the summer. So we're excited to welcome you back um, come fall. Um, so let's talk a little bit about residence halls. We'll talk about a number of areas, but we'll start off with talking about the residence halls. Those students, those of you that are living on campus in university uh, residence halls, uh, we will be assigning those rooms as they are normally built. Um, so if you're in a double room, um, that means generally two people are assigned to those rooms. So we will continue with that uh, occupancy, that particular model, partially because we know you're moving from your home family, where you're coming from, to your new university family. And we're trying to do our best um, given the restrictions that are around us and the new ways that we'll be, we will be doing things to try to continue to do some of those collegiate, offer those collegiate experiences that you want, where you lay in bed at night and talk about the world um, before you doze off to sleep. So we're trying to do that. But we also know that um, we, we want to keep as many students on campus um, because we know that resident assistants and professional staff and others will help you with that transition to campus. We also know it's important for that, uh, that peer interaction that you talking with other students, whether it's on your floor or your roommate or the new people that you're going to be meeting um, from different areas of the country or different areas of the world are so important to that experience, particularly your first year. Um, but understand, as we've heard earlier, um, we will have some requirements on, on um, our students living in the residence halls. We will be managing your visitors a little bit differently. Obviously, um, as we heard earlier, you'll be required to wear masks, in particular when you're out in the public spaces, not in your room. Um, we'll have a robust cleaning schedule for the public spaces and restrooms, as we've heard. Um, and certainly, um, we know on occasion um, that we may have a student who tests positive. Um, and then we've got ways to help isolate, provide isolated housing and provide meals to you while you recover. For those of you that are living off campus in apartment complexes, keep in mind that we will provide some guidance and some information as you return to campus. We've been in regular communication with landlords um, and other community members, as well as coordinating with the Mon County Health Department um, and local and the local government as we try to uh, coordinate move in and move out. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about your roommates. Um, uh, as we've talked about uh, your roommates, whether that's on or off campus, um, we'll be providing guidance on how to work through um, roommate issues that you might have. We know it's a part of the collegiate experience. For example, if you're living on campus, um, RAs are trained to help you resolve those roommate conflicts. Um, and if you're living off campus, we've got an off-campus housing office that will help support you should you have problems with your roommates. Let's talk a little bit about move-in. In particular, we'll focus on residence hall move-in. Um, so we will develop some guidelines, and we're uh, developing those guidelines now that uh, we're working in cooperation with our local health officials as well as our university health experts um, to, to develop a good move-in protocol. And in particular, um, we'll, we will offer move-in over an extended period, a little bit different than what we've done in years past, but we will, we will extend uh, move-in and we will also have you sign up in advance um, for that move-in period so we can coordinate and slow uh, slowly uh, occupy our residence halls because we will also be doing that in conjunction with the testing that we discussed earlier. Um, so uh, we will also um, manage some of the, the, the number of people accessing the residence halls during that move-in period, but we'll provide guidance in, in the coming weeks uh, as we prepare for that. Let's talk a little about student services and support. Um, uh, as we've heard a little bit, our Mountain Lair, our Rec Center, all those areas will continue to be, will open in the fall, but we'll operate them a little bit differently. Um, uh, as we look at our Rec Center and our fitness equipment, um, if you think uh, that, that many of those are close together, we're working to spread those out a little bit 
and certainly will be have uh, will have much more intensive cleaning of recreation equipment. Our mountain layer, um, uh, an, another space, this large space, we'll be using that a little bit differently and managing those meeting rooms as well as the food court area where students uh, sit for their meals, as well as hat fields as we try to make sure that we provide appropriate social distancing space while you're studying, um, while you're eating, um, and while you're hanging out and, and, and hanging out and interacting with your friends. Um, events that we may have on campus, um, uh, will, some of them will occur, but they will be scaled back and they will be uh, done in a, in a very different way because again, we are very concerned about your safety and the safety of our faculty and staff. Another area that's, that's uh, used a lot by our students is our Career Center for Counseling. Um, so that counseling will continue to take place. Uh, some of that counseling will be in person. Um, some of it will be uh, telehealth. Um, and so we've got a number of ways to continue to support you. If we talk next about student organizations, um, we've got uh, 475, 485 clubs and organizations on campus. And so we wanna make sure you still have that full experience as best we can, but under new guidelines. And so we'll work with you on how to have uh, appropriate meetings with your club or organization or your fraternity or sorority with appropriate social distancing. Some of it may be through Teams or, or Zoom or, or, or Google, uh, different ways we've got uh, for you to connect a video through video. But also, we also know many of you have smaller organizations or your executive committees uh, may need to meet in person, but we'll, we'll work with you on spreading that out and using classrooms after hours or other spaces. And the other thing that we're hoping to do certainly is make sure you continue to connect with campus. And so we're working to develop an app that helps you connect with clubs and organizations um, in an easy manner so you can meet other students or if you're a continuing student, um, join a new club or organization because you know how important that is for you not only for your resume as you prepare for graduation but also um, that's part of the collegiate experience that we want you to continue to enjoy so with that Sharon I'll turn it back to you thank you Corey and now I'll talk a little bit about communications there's a lot of information to share and so we're going to break it up into different sections so that we can provide you the most information most accurately as it becomes available um, to note, our website will launch on Monday, June 8th, so watch your e-news for the link to be able to go there and check out more information. Questions can also be sent to a return to campus at mail.wvu.edu email address. Any specific question you may have, you can send to us there, and we'll answer as quickly as we can, or we'll let you know the date that that answer will become available. New information is going to be released each week. So every Tuesday and Thursday, there will be an opportunity to learn more about the information that has been released. On Tuesdays, you will get a written letter from a senior leader that will outline information and details about that specific area. And then every Thursday, we'll be holding a live return to campus conversation where you can ask your question. The only exception is next week as Tuesday is a holiday. So information will be coming out on Monday, June 8th. On Monday, June 8th, we will be releasing more details regarding academics. And then a return to campus conversation will be held that Thursday, June 11th, with Mary Ann Reed. So be sure to watch your emails for more information and on how to log on. An outline of when information will become available will be released, and the dates of those future campus conversations will be in that information as well. Be sure to check the website, or you can check the uh, release that was, re that was sent out yesterday um, to you via your emails. Also recommend that you follow all of our WVU social media, media channels, check your e-news and your u-news as often as possible, and also refer to the website for more information. So now it's time for questions. All right, so Marianne, we're gonna start with you. Um, we've heard from many students that they saw a change to their schedule last week, and I know that you talked a little bit about this in your presentation, but could you clarify how scheduling is gonna work and if all classes are going to be online? So let me just say that our goal is for each student to have a, an experience that, that includes a mix of modes of instruction. So there may be some online, there may be some in the classroom, and there may be some of this hybrid flex instruction. Uh, we are particularly concerned about our freshmen and our sophomores that they have an experience that is primarily um, based on online instruction. Um, 
I will say though that that because we are um, reducing density in the classroom to 50%, it is reducing the availability of some classrooms. And so there will be more online instruction um, you know, than in the past because we have to keep our students and our faculty safe. Um, again, uh, you know, there, there, some, of the, some of the academic uh, units may have actually communicated to the students um, a little prematurely, but I, you know, I understand that they're impatient also to have some certainty to the fall schedule. Um, what I would say is that all of those decisions will be made and communicated um, with, with the goal of, of, of the end of June, June 30th, so that we would have those schedules finalized or the academics calendar um, finalized by June 30th, and that would include the classroom, uh, the mode of instruction if it's different um, than online, um, as well as the times, uh, the dates, I'm mean, sorry, the times of day, because that may change also. It's this complicated process of trying to juggle all these different elements. Um, but I would urge students to wait until they, uh, you know, until that time to know whether or not they uh, want to make any changes to their schedule. So Ron, next question is for you. Um, will the PRT run this fall? That is the question everyone wants to know. So we're still working through that. We have not made a decision on it. What I can say is that if the PRT is running this fall, it will be with significant social distancing and safety protocols, and that a minimum we will be running additional buses, both university buses and working with Mountain Line to make sure that our students have ample opportunities to um, get between our campuses. So more to come on that as we work with our healthcare professionals and an understanding on that. You know, what we'll focus on is health and safety protocols. And if we think that we can run the PRT in a safe manner, um, consistent with those protocols, we will. If not, then we'll have buses. Um, and we're also working on things where um, we may have drop-offs or places for things like Uber and Lyft to transport and make it easier for students to get between our campuses as well as we work through those details in the next few weeks. So Corey, this next question is for you. Some students are concerned about the virus and they're asking if they can get a single room in the residence halls. Yeah, that's a great question. So we, we do have some uh, limited availability on our single rooms. Um, and so I'll wrap that, not just with single rooms, but all room transfers. If you're interested in changing room, to contact our housing assignment office. Um, um, you can get that information at housing.wvu.edu or dialing 304-293-2811. Um, and there's an email address, but uh, so we do have some limited availability, yes. Chris, this question's for you. An employee writes in asking, if I have an underlying health condition and I'm concerned about returning to work, what are my options? Yeah, so, uh, Sharon, we have a, a standard process we currently use for the Americans with Disabilities Act, where our ADA coordinator works in conjunction with our medical management team to uh, understand the, the concern and limitation and then, uh, you know, work on an acceptable uh, accommodation to, you know, find a win-win solution for the employee and for the institution. Uh, in this case, we had to modify it a little bit because under um, you know, the coronavirus guidelines, the CDC has put out some additional uh, underlying conditions or concerns that aren't technically uh, disabilities under the ADA. And then the other thing we had to try to uh, plan for is, in some cases, it might not be employee specific, but that employee may live with someone who's vulnerable and has an underlying condition. And so we've modified the process to be able to, uh, you know, take all those things into account and make sure that we can do our very best to provide a, a situation that's gonna work for the employee and for the institution. And Jeff, this one's for you. We know that we talked a lot about the, in the presentations about the importance of wearing masks, but this person is asking, do I really have to wear one? They're not very comfortable, so can you explain why it's important that we have to wear masks this fall? And yes, we really want people to wear masks, um, ab absolutely. Um, there are many things about this coronavirus that we're still learning, um, but one thing that we know for sure is that this is a germ that is spread through the air. Uh, it's spread when people are speaking, coughing, sneezing, shouting, even clearing their throat causes the germ to be in the air and to spread. And by wearing a mask, 
we create a physical barrier that reduces that spread from individuals who may have it and also reduces your chances of, uh, of, of obtaining it. We also know that um, by wearing a mask, it reduces uh, the amount that people touch their face, um, which is another way that the virus can spread. So for all these reasons, uh, we believe that masks, as I mentioned earlier, are one of the most important tools in our toolkit. And we're gonna be really requiring this and encouraging everyone to get on board and show their mountaineer spirit by wearing this mask. Corey, another question for you. It says, what if my roommate doesn't abide by the health guidelines? What can I do? That's a great question. Um, so one of the things that we have on every floor is a resident assistant and every building has a residence hall coordinator. And so if you've had that conversation with your roommate um, and you're still not having success, um, um, we, what you'll be encouraged to do and asked to do is reach out to your resident assistant and residence hall coordinator who will provide guidance and assistance and, and help work through that situation um, uh, because obviously we want you to be safe, but we also want your roommate to be practicing uh, good behaviors to keep uh, your roommate safe as well as all those around your roommate. Marianne, this one, this one is for you. It says, what safety precautions will be in the classroom? I know you talked about that a little bit in your presentation, but can you reiterate some of those measures that we're gonna be taking? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, it's on several, I would say it's a threefold approach. One is that, that faculty um, students will be required to wear masks in the classroom. Um, faculty uh, may uh, opt not to wear them if they are standing behind a plex, a one of the plexiglass shields that will be in every classroom in front of the lectern. Um, but we are encouraging everyone again to, to, to use the PPE that we provide for them. Um, secondly, we are um, engaging in social distancing. Um, so we're reducing density in the classroom. Uh, our goal is by 50% so that students will be spread out. Um, and then, um, you know, this idea again of offering multiple forms of instruction, some online, some in the classroom, some through this hybrid flex model, with again, the goal of reducing density and keeping everybody safe. Rob, this question is for you. Um, we know that testing is going to be um, required as faculty, staff, and students return for fall, but they're asking when will they be notified that they have to come in for testing, and if they're gonna to continue to work from home, will they have to be tested? Thanks, Sharon. We're working through the details on that right now. And so what we're working through is sometime towards mid to late July, we'll begin testing as we prepare for the fall. We'll actually have an opportunity for folks to schedule when they can come in and get tested. And so, so for those employees and students who are in Morgantown and intend to stay in Morgantown, they'll be able to schedule hopefully a time to test in late July or early August. And then as students return to Morgantown, as we run up towards the first day of classes, they'll be able to get their testing done as they do that. And so we'll be working with our faculty, our staff and our students as they come back and has, have they have, as they have the ability to schedule so that we can get through and get all of our testing done. We're still working through the details, but in the coming weeks, we will have information for our employees and for our students as to how they go about scheduling and working through the process of testing. Chris, we have another question. It says, we have an open position. Can we start the hiring process and can candidates come to campus? Well, um, you know, the first piece I'll say on that one, Sharon, is that, uh, you know, given all the ambiguity right now in terms of the financial uncertainty in the fall and whether or not there's going to be a second wave, all those kind of things, we are really advising that we only move forward and fill roles that we think are crucial to that on-campus operations and student experience uh, for the fall. Now, given that, uh, if it is a position that's crucial and we need to fill it, uh, what we're asking is that uh, we use phone and video conference as much as we can through that process to limit uh, the amount of visits to campus and the amount of people that might be uh, exposed to a potential candidate or candidates as they come in. And then any in-person interview should be coordinated back through your HR partner and really should be limited to that final candidate pool. As I talked about uh, earlier, every visitor should have a host so that way we know where this person's been, who they've been exposed to, just to help us again with the contact tracing. Uh, we hope we won't have any issues around that with candidates, but uh, we just want to make sure we guard against every 
every possible scenario. We have another question for Jeff. Jeff, is it really necessary to be six feet apart from each other, especially if we're wearing masks? Uh, yes, um, masks and social distancing really go together. They're, they're complementary. One does not um, obviate the need for the other. Uh, and, and as you can imagine, six feet is um, what we're recommending uh, in all circumstances. But it, it, the, ma the point is that in some cases, if someone has a forceful cough or sneeze, uh, you know, the virus can actually spread much beyond six feet, uh, which is the, the reason why masks are so important as to reduce that amount of spread. So these two things really do go hand in hand and we'll, we'll be asking everyone to, uh, to the fullest extent possible to both distance social, socially six feet and to wear masks whenever in the presence of others. Another question for you, Corey, regarding housing is asking, can I get my housing deposit back if I decide I no longer want to live in the residence halls? Yeah, thanks, Sharon. So, so normally those deadlines for refunds have passed, but we know this is a very unique year. Um, and so we're relaxing our normal refund guidelines and we'll uh, work with students and, and offer, continue to offer partial refunds as we go throughout the summer of those of housing deposits. Marianne, another question for you. It's asking, if my class becomes an online class, will there still be the pass-fail option? The short answer to that question is no. Um, that we allowed for that pass-fail option in the spring because of the unusual circumstances of how we had to switch to remote instruction um, so quickly. We weren't able to, to build our, camp, our online camp uh, courses in the way that we would like to through our eCampus system. Um, uh, and even with that, only about 25% of our student, students took advantage of that pass fail option. Um, we plan to not offer that option in the fall um, in part because, well, one, because we think that we're going to be providing an even better academic experience because we have more time to plan for that. Um, but also because um, if, if a student has too many uh, of those on their, um, on their uh, academic um, record, it can actually impact their ability to get into graduate school. Um, and so we're trying to also make sure that our students aren't adversely impacted by that short term, you know, desire to have the pass fail option. So Rob, this question is for you. What are we doing to work with the city of Morgantown? So we've had discussions not only with the city of Morgantown, but also with our county commission and our local health department, as well as state officials. And so we've been having discussions. We've worked together previously with the county on move in, or excuse me, move out at the end of the at the end of um, commencement, going forward. And so we have a we have had a continuing and ongoing dialogue about how not only do we keep our students and our faculty employees safe while they're on campus, but how we're really smart and we think through how we work together for when folks are off campus, not only for our students and keeping them safe but that so that our community partners know that we're going to be good stewards and good, good partners of our community. We are an integral part of our community, which means we have a lot of privileges and being part of a great community. We have a lot of responsibilities. And so for our students and our faculty and staff, we're working hard with our community partners so that we can all live well together and have that on-campus experience and finish it. So we are working with them on a number of strategies to make sure that we all work together through this. And Jeff, I know that you talked a little bit about this during your presentation, but can you explain again what happens if there is a positive case on campus and how will the university contact trace can notify people? Yeah, sure. So uh, the first thing that occurs is that the individual themselves is notified um, that whenever a testing is performed, we make sure that we have contact information, we know how to reach people if, they, if their test results should return to us as a positive case. Um, we contact that individual and they're provided with information, information about what to do, how to take care of themselves and what not to do. Uh, and at the same time, we simultaneously notify the University uh, Environmental Health and Safety Program uh, that allows us to look back to where individuals have been on campus and to perform the appropriate cleaning and disinfection procedures that are necessary uh, to uh, prevent any sort of spread 
as a result of where uh, the individual may have been. Uh, we also uh, simultaneously, in the case of students, notify Corey and his team at Student Life so that if necessary, students can be isolated, uh, for example, from the dorm situation can be, uh, and their needs can be attended to uh, as well uh, through the WVU care team and through other resources that are available. And then finally, we also are notifying the local health department who will also reach out and make a contact to initiate their procedures with contact tracing. We may be doing some of that ourselves in collaboration with the local health department, uh, but one way or another, we'll be making several calls to follow up to see where that person's been, who they've been interacting with, and then reaching out to each of those contacts to determine the level of contact they've had and whether or not testing, additional testing needs to be performed uh, for individuals who've been in contact with that index case. Uh, finally, I'll say we're also um, continuing to aggressively explore the use of several phone apps and other technologies uh, that may enhance our ability to contact trace in real time uh, as we move forward. And another question for you, Chris, it says, will there be training for supervisors to assist our employees as they return to campus? Yes, Sharon. So in addition to the uh, online learning module, we're going to ask all faculty, staff, and students to complete. Uh, the LNOD team is putting together a leadership series uh, to help uh, supervisors deal with situations they might encounter uh, in the workplace and also a series of checklists that they can use as a, a ready reference to, to help reinforce what they learn in those sessions. And Ron, this last question is for you. Um, people are excited to be coming back to campus. The students want to be here, but we're also getting the question, can you guarantee that campus won't close again? So thanks, Sharon. So, so short answer, and then I'm gonna give some context and perspective from my two cents anyway. So we cannot guarantee that we're going to stay on campus throughout the year, but, but here's what we know. We know as a leadership team that we want to be back on campus. We know from surveys and just talking with our students that they all want to be back. I can remember walking into my first class in Chitwood Hall when I was an undergrad. I remember my roommates. I remember the experiences that I've had um, at the university and the privilege that I have to work here. Um, and I know that I want the students that are here and our prospective students to have that same experience. Now, I'd like to be able to wave a magic wand and say we've got a vaccine and we don't have to worry about being safe this fall. And so here's the plea I'm going to make to our faculty, our staff, our students, our parents, our alums, and for our community. It's no fun living with COVID. But if we want to do everything we can to, to do everything to minimize the chance that we go back home, I just want you to think about some things. If you want to be in that classroom, if you want to hang out with your buddies, if you want to do that groundbreaking research, if you want to see Coach Izzo Brown lead the women's soccer team to battle or Coach Hugs or Coach Brown with Mountaineer football on Saturdays, if you want to do all those experiences, and I'm going to ask you to have some personal responsibility and accountability and think about campus safety. So those simple things we've talked about, getting your test, wearing your mask, if you're not feeling well, stay home, take care and respect one another as you come back to fall this year. It's not just up to me or to President Gee or to Dr. Coben or Marianne as to whether we can guarantee a safe fall. It's gonna be part of all of us realizing that we're gonna to have to band together with our Mountaineer spirit and culture to pull through this. We can pull off the on-campus fall if we all work together and follow some of the simple things we do. We have talked about this fall going forward. We think we're well ahead from a planning perspective. The leadership team that I get the privilege of work with, working with is working hard on it every day. And so just think about that. Think about all the things you want to experience by being on campus and work hard together so that we can pull this off. And if we do, Sharon, I really do believe we've got a great chance of coming onto campus this fall and staying here and being on campus for the school year. So I can't guarantee it, but if we all work together, I think we can get there. Great. Thank you, Rob. And um, all that you talked about also really resonates with our Mountaineer values. So if we lean on those, I think we can definitely have a successful fall semester. So to wrap the session up, um, let's just go over a few last minute reminders. Reminder that questions can be sent to return to campus at mail.wvu.edu and we'll do our best to get answers to you as quickly as possible. 
Reminder, on Monday, June 8th, we will be releasing more information regarding academics and a return to campus conversation regarding academics will be held on Thursday, June 11th, so watch your e-news for more information. Um, if you want to know the full schedule of our campus conversations, be sure to check out the uh, website on Monday as well as the release that was sent to you yesterday that has an outline of all the campus conversations coming up as well as the topics that will be addressed. And again, just a reminder to follow WVU's social media channels, check your e-news and u-news often, and refer to the website as often as you can for updated information. So thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you at future Return to Campus Conversations.